From the best game of the season to the worst game of the season. Tonight, the Astros just didn't look great, but tensions were flaring and benches cleared. The AL West goes back to a two game lead for the Rangers. Let's talk about this and what the Astros need to fix upon the return of Altuve and Jordan Alvarez in this edition of Locked on Astros. Alvarez hits a high drive center field. Beer leans back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked on Houston Astros, and we're your daily Astros podcast. I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And you can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. You can find the show at Locked on Astros on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, wherever you get your podcasts. Good pods, Apple, Google, Spotify, we are free and easy to listen to, and that's right. We are your team every day. Win or lose, rain or shine, make sure you make us your first listen every single day. Look, folks, I got in here a few minutes late. I was kind of like Mauricio Dubon to a bench-clearing brawl. Apparently, the delay on the monitor in the dugout causes one to be late to the brawl when you're not watching or when you're not on the field. You're down there taking hacks, getting ready for a late inning at bat. And Mauricio Dubon jumped right in. That is my dude, Mauricio Dubon. Look, this game really did not go well. This was a tough loss. So today, the big takeaways, a tough loss, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, number two, Jordan Alvarez and Jose Altuve returned. And then number three, what does this loss signify or tell us about the needs of this team? And I think most of y'all, because your smart fans and your smart listeners can probably tell us the things that we need, the things that we saw tonight. Framber Valdez, three and two-thirds innings, eight hits, six runs, all of them earned. Only two walks, but one strikeout. The first three hits he gave up were on, actually the first two hits he gave up were on hanging curveballs. The third hit, I think it was a home run, was a changeup. And I'm looking through his game log all year. He hasn't had this bad of an outing since really May 16th. I mean, he's given up some runs. On June 8th, he gave up three. On June 27th, he gave up four. He has given up five and four runs. So this is a this is a fourth game in a row that he's given up at least four runs. Four of them earned. Um, he I don't I don't know if he's gassed. I don't know if he's feeling the pressure. But look, some days clubs just have it. And and today, Framber didn't, and Maldi couldn't calm him down. Marcus Simeon raised the bar. And, and we'll talk about the names y'all are mentioning for trade pieces in the third segment. So let's so let's hold on to that talk for now. What happened to Framber? He just got hit, man. He 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 didn't have look, he only had five swings and misses. Um this is a guy that on like He had one strikeout. He hasn't had a game that bad all season. I think the few strikeouts he had this year was three, and that was back on April 29th. Um, He put together just two games ago. I know it was the Angels, but 13 strikeouts in a game. So we needed Framber in this one. Framber needed Framber in this one. Um, And it, it just, it just didn't happen. I mean, we could go through the tail of the tape of what happened. It, it, it looked like, it started off fine. Um, you know, I actually, I said 13 to three. It's actually 13 to five. Sorry, no disrespect to Yanner Diaz on the late inning home run. But Alex Bregman started the game off right. A three run bomb. You have three to nothing. You're like, okay, cool. We got this. Third inning, Nathaniel Lowe homered to deep right center field. Marcus Simeon scored two to three. You're like, okay, two to three. It's not a big deal. Leone, you know, Leone Tavares singled. Mitch Garver scored four to three. Okay, it's 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 not bad. Six to three. Simeon homered. Then the tensions rose. The tensions rose, 
And, and um, Matthew, I'll get to the starting catcher here in a second. Look, I'm I'm going to tell you what the club has said publicly, what Dana Brown has said. And whether you agree with that or not, you got to take it up with Dana Brown. I'm the messenger here. So going into, I mean, the top of the fourth inning, it, it yeah, it was six to three. But the tensions rose, and Marcus Simeon, to me, put himself on a list with guys like Ryan Tapera. Um, who else is out there? Joe Kelly. <laughs> I don't want to say he's Mike Fires bad, but he was talking a lot of smack tonight. Look, look, you you want your opponent to have moxie, you want your opponent to have swagger, you want your opponent to like be in the moment. But when he hopped on the base, when he scored on that grand slam, that was too much. And I was actually actually caught a portion of the Rangers broadcast because I'm up in the Dallas area right now speaking to you live from a hotel. Um, And they actually said, well, Martin Maldonado was saying stuff to Simeon and Simeon was quiet the whole way. No, he was not. He was not quiet the whole way. Look, I'm not going to get into it like he said, she said, pointing fingers like like schoolyard kids do. I mean, that's what the, I'm sorry. That their broadcasters have sounded so unprofessional. Now, I know Blummer and I know TK throw shade, but they do it in a way that it's kind of subtle. I mean, these dudes in Arlington obviously haven't been commentators of a team in Arlington that has done anything of significance. And it really showed. Um, This was a tough loss. Look, Maldonado didn't look great behind the plate, but Dana Brown came out and said, Dana Brown came out and said that Yiner Diaz is getting better at catching and game planning. He said, now this, uh, again, this is not me saying this. So don't, so don't come at me for telling you what they're telling us. Okay. Dana Brown did say that the pitchers are not yet ready to hand over the reins to Yiner, but he is the catcher of the future. That's what they're saying. Some people say they're lying. Some people say, well, they're not being honest, but here's the deal. Think about this. And I want to, I want to pause on this for a second. Because here is the thing, and, and you know what, y'all can. Here's the thing, y'all can, y'all can lecture these words, y'all can lecture Dana Brown, but I, let me ask you this: If you're the GM of the club, why would you lie about a catcher that you know is going to be your catcher of the future? Why would you lie about his skills publicly on camera? So you're telling me be, be, because I had this conversation with someone on Twitter. People are telling me that Dana Brown purposely sabotages or makes Diaz look bad in public. You think a GM's going to do that? You realize players are assets, right? Players are assets. They're not going to purposely say that. And, and, and so at the end of the day, while I don't think they've been forthcoming about injuries and timelines and stuff, I don't think they're lying about this. But anyways, let's let's put that behind us because it's water under the bridge. Diaz is not going to start until the pitchers or the management feels that they have enough evidence that he game plans well enough to earn that starting position. Go argue with them, not with me. I'm telling you what they've told me, okay? Jose Altuve, 0 for 3 today. No strikeouts. He was 0 for 3, okay? Jordan Alvarez. Jordan Alvarez comes in one for two. His first plate appearance, what do you know? After a home run by Alex Bregman, he gets plunked. The ball got away from Heaney. I don't know why he would hit Jordan Alvarez his first at bat back, but it sure looks bad. And I think that's where tensions rose at the time. (laughs) Mike is like, if Maldonado gets suspended, we can get a catcher that can actually catch and also hit. Look. Mike, y'all can think all you want to that that Diaz is the answer at catching behind the plate. But until this team puts their full weight behind his game planning, it doesn't matter what we think about this catching position. It's just a reality. I've learned to live with it. Look, Maldi's hitting 170. Okay, yeah, he was two for three. We gave him credit last night. We know Diaz, he came up in the, in the you know, um, he at the end hit that um he got that hit in that in that last at bat he got the home run 
and we know what his bat is. But I think what's keeping him out of the starting spot is actually his lack of ability to plan. Again, they're telling me this. I'm not saying this. They are. And I want to talk to y'all about, look, if you're out there spending money and you're out there shopping and you're not getting paid for it, then you probably aren't using Ibotta. Well, I betta that you're going to like Ibotta. Picking up burgers and hot dogs for the summer barbecue, you know you're already doing it, so why not get cash back for it with Ibotta? It's officially summer, and a new season means new clothes, but your closet shouldn't be the only thing growing when you make purchases. It's time to stop spending your hard-earned money without getting anything in return. Enter Ibotta. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. It has saved the average user $120 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers to um, and retailers to when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering its listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code MLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use ML and use the code MLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play Store or App Store and use the code MLB. If you're going to shop, you got to use I bought it and make sure that if you cannot watch the game, that you're listening to the game and the Astros play the Tampa Bay Rays on Friday, 7, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search Astros. OK, we talked about Altuve's return. We talked about Jordan's return. There wasn't much there. Jordan did get on base pretty much, I guess, every single time he got on base. Um, he got a double, he got hit by a pitch, and he got a walk. He did his job. They both came, they both um were done um after three at bats. So good for them. They did a good job. Um, so what does this game tell us? Not only did Valdez not do well, but ooh, Seth Martinez. Wow. One inning, six hits, seven earned runs, brutal. His ERA is now up to 531. Montero comes in one and one thirds innings, gets a strikeout, doesn't give up a run. Montero does his job. Peter Mashinsky gives up three hits, but gets two strikeouts, does his job in two innings, and Stanek comes in and gets a strikeout. So Montero, Mashinsky, and, and, and Stanek come in, and, and it, it's just, look, at the, we need pitching, guys. David says, go over the cap for once. <laughs> Darby's like, Brett, where are you? I am in a bunker in an undisclosed location. Hey, look, you notice I hung up some Astros paraphernalia. <laughs> it's my sad attempt of having a Astros background. An Alvarez jersey, a locked on shirt, and a Astros hat that you can't see because I couldn't display it with the logo because it kept falling. <laughs> so, look, this is my setup, guys. Um, we are bringing you your team every single day. We do need pitchers. ASAP Stokey Beats is saying that. Look, dude, that game, golly. I'll tell you what's funny, though. Look, look, you got to be able to laugh at yourself. Number one, we won the series. We are up six games to four in the Lone Star Series, and I could care less about winning a silver boot, a boot like dipped in silver. I want to beat the Rangers in this season series, but also be on top of them in the division. And I've said in the past, and you can hold me to it. You can hold account to my word that I said, well, maybe we, sh maybe we don't have to win the West. Maybe, maybe not winning the West might be a good thing, bro. I don't know. Like I just want this team hot going into the playoffs. Okay. And if that means hot going in the playoffs and we still get second or hot going in the playoffs, when we get first, I don't care. I just want this team hot. And I think the only way that, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here. Darby, I would love, I would love to make that happen. Um, he says we need locked on Astros merch. I would love to make that happen. I've tried and I'm continuing to try. If I can get the powers that be to produce some locked on Astros merch, you guys and girls will be the first to know. I promise you. I just we are not allowed to produce and give out. We are allowed to make stuff for ourselves, but anyways, I digress. Sorry about that. 
bummer on that. But look, we need a pitcher. There are so many pitchers out there that are available. Stroman, Giolito, um, Montgomery. Um, gosh, who else is out there? Um, someone someone, give me some names here. Um, I just had a list. Oh, um, Lorenzen, Rodriguez. Um, there are so many guys out there that I think are available and are doable. Dylan Cease. Oh, sorry. I don't think Dylan Cease is is obtainable. I, I just think the price is way too high for him. Oh, wait. Giolito just got traded to, to who? Let me look at this. To the, Are you? Oh, my gosh. Here go the Angels. The Angels are going to. Holy Lord. So we're live on air. If you're listening to this, I do apologize if this is old news. But I've got to look this up. Um, Lucas Giolito. Let me look this up while we are on the air. Are you kidding me? Lucas Giolito and Ronaldo Lopez from the White Sox in exchange for Edgar Cuero and Kai Bush. <sighs> wow. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what to say. The the Angels believe they're going to make a playoff run. They believe they're going to make it into that third wild card spot. I cannot believe this. I am shocked. I, I am absolutely shocked. No offense, but you should trade Otani, get a ton of prospects, and build. But I guess, look, hey, they're going to go for it. Swing for the fences, guys. I mean, oh, wow. That is a breaking news story. That literally just happened. And Lucas Giolito is a guy that I've been calling for. Yeah, Otani's staying. They, they are not trading him at all. Like, he's there. Otani's going to stay. They're not going to make the playoffs. If they do, they're going to be an early season and an early postseason bounce. I'm pretty sure of it. And then going into next year, he's going to walk. I really doubt he stays unless they go out and just just crush the trade market, which I don't know. But like I, I that that totally throws me off. <laughs> well, forget Lucas Giolito, kids. Scratch him off the Christmas list because he ain't coming here. So now that he's gone and they got some picks, does that mean that they are up on cease next? Does that mean that they are going to really go in on, you know, Eduardo Rodriguez or someone like that? They need another pitcher. They need another left-handed pitcher, I believe. Left-handed, right-handed, I guess it really doesn't matter. But I really think the Astros need to go do something. Who who do y'all want? Verlander, I don't know if he's coming back, but if he comes back at this point, the way Verlander and them are pitching, I mean, the way Framber and Javier have been inconsistent lately, and outside of that 13 strikeout game, he has given up quite a few runs. Um, would y'all want him back? Oh, Stroman, yeah, Stroman, Verlander. Look, we need someone to come here that has some moxie about him. Jordan Montgomery would not be bad. He's a left-handed pitcher. So Eduardo Rodriguez and Jordan Montgomery are both left-handed pitchers. Um, we need a bullpen arm. That's right. Um, I don't know what bullpen arms are out there off the top of my head. I think the Cardinals have some other bullpen arms. But, yes, Verlander would cost less prospects. I think Verlander coming here would mean the Mets would eat a lot of that salary. Scoobal from the Tigers, you know, he hasn't been mentioned, but I believe you've mentioned him before. Scoobal would be a really good pickup. There are some decent pitchers of Kendall Graveman, correct? Yes, we could we could go after um, Eduardo Rodriguez and Kendall Graveman. We could go after Josh Hader. That is a good call. Can you imagine? Imagine for me this, a world where Josh Hader ends up on this roster and John Singleton somehow – ends up in the postseason, and both John Singleton and Josh Hader are contributors in a postseason run, and the Astros win the World Series. I'm just saying, like, that would be <laughs> that would be so poetic and so kind of weird. I don't think that'll happen, but it's just fun to dream. Alex Cobb, see, here's the thing. I'm hearing that the San Francisco Giants are buyers, and they, oh, Anoli Paredes, he just, he just can't get out of AAA. Anoli Paredes, um, his... I'm not going to break it down right now, but his motion and the way he pitches on the mound, someone asked me here what happened to Anoli Paredes, and that's why I kind of shifted gears here. He's just not – he can't repeat what he does on the mound enough, and he's just too inconsistent. It just ends up hurting him. 
Um, and that's why he can't control the ball. Exactly. Kaylee's like, he, he doesn't have any control. Um, so, oh wow world traveler said she hears that dusty is a puppet Ooh, wow that's that's a that's a harsh criticism world traveler you know these guys just lost why are you going to do that <laughs> all right so let me just tell y'all something if you cannot make the game if you're not going to listen to the game you're like i want somewhere to go so i can watch the game i've got the perfect solution i'm glad you asked me you need, oh my gosh, get it in here. You need to go and hang out at your local area Hooters. Why? Because Hooters makes you happy. They have TVs all over the place. And it's not just for baseball. It's UFC fights, whatever big events are going on. They have buy one, get one wings on Monday. They have Tuesday, nine ninety nine burgers and fries. Wednesdays, buy one, get one boneless wings. Thursdays, nineteen ninety nine dollars Wings and Big Daddy Bundle. And on Fridays, $19.83 crab legs everywhere, anytime. $3 Blue Moon Drafts, $9.99 Michelob Ultra Pitchers. No matter the occasion, Hooters is there to make you happy. And if you want there in Pearland, they still have a toy drop. There's still time to go give toys for tots as you can donate to that. And also you can go check out the bus trip that they have in NASA. On August 24th, it's a ditch day bus trip where they offer tickets. They give you food. They give you a ride. You get to hang out with the world famous Hooters girls. There's so many things happening. Whether you are in Sugarland, Pearland, whether you're in Kima, Seaside, um, I guess that's kind of the same place. Um, whether you're in Galveston, whether you're in Humble, no matter where you are in the Houston area, you can check out Hooters. They are there to make you happy. Go hang out with the guys at Locked On Hangout because Hooters is the place to be. And don't forget that if you cannot watch the game, then you need to listen to the game. The Astros play the Rays the next time, Friday, 7, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with the Sirius XM on the Sirius on the SXM app. Search Astros. Man, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. You guys and girls are the best. I love every one of y'all. Thank you so much um, for putting up with me going solo tonight. Eric is back in town, but he was he was just barely getting back in town and I wasn't going to put it on him to come on here. He's, he spent a long time in the airport. The airport thing is just a mess. And so I believe Eric will be back tomorrow night. He may do a show solo or with somebody. I may not make it back tomorrow night, depending on what our schedule is here. I'm in the Dallas Fort Worth area, actually living. I am in enemy territory tonight. Um, my son's basketball team is at a national basketball tournament. So I'm pretty excited about that. We got our first game tomorrow. So uh, hopefully Wheelhouse Jr. and the crew will uh, will will um, catch a W tomorrow. Um, and then we have one game on Friday. Then that puts us in pool play. And that basically, I mean, sets us in a bracket play. And we go from there. So hopefully we do that. Um, so look, tonight, are there any good things to, to gather from this? Jordan Alvarez and Altuve both look healthy. Um, the back end of the bullpen did their job. I mean, you couldn't do any worse. There was really no pressure. Um, and here's the thing. The trade market, although we just announced a trade here, thank you, um, loyal listeners and loyal followers. Um, and, you know, the, the trade market, I think, is going to be a little slow the next few days. I don't think it's going to be very fast. I just I don't see the Astros making a big splash. I don't see the Astros making a massive splash um, here. And so I just think they're going to go out and maybe hit a double. And I I, I think they're going to rely on the bats of Altuve and Alvarez helping them out. But the pitching need is so, so needs to be addressed. They keep saying the left-handed bat. Oh, yeah, Darby, we mentioned that earlier. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Will. We won the series. We won the series. Yes, we did win the series. We have Tampa, who we've actually played really well. Um, Brett, do you think Jordan batted fifth to ease him back in? So Jordan actually had comments for Julia before the game and said that he felt, oh, sorry, he felt pressure because the offense had been doing so well lately. And he went in there and, you know, he did a good job. I mean, had he not been plunked, who knows? Maybe it's a home run. If he doesn't get plunked and it's a home run, maybe that changes the entire makeup of the game. But 
it is yet. Yeah, Nick, he's saying I wouldn't get my hopes up on any moves being made. Well, I wouldn't say that. I just don't think they're going to be massive big time moves. Okay. Rumors are saying CJ Crone would be a good fit at first base or DH. That is correct. Um, the angels have discussed Jemmer Candelario trade with the nationals per John Morosi. Look at y'all coming in hot with the hot news. Look at y'all are news breakers. I mean, what am I doing here? Give you guys a mic. This is awesome. Um, heard they were going to place, place him third and he asked for Tucker to be left at third. Interesting. So here's look guys, it's not that I didn't do my homework, but man, being out of town and trying to juggle all these things, I really appreciate you guys giving me stuff. Y'all are the true info. That's right, man. Y'all are it dude. Like this podcast really survives and really thrives because of you, not because of me, not because of Eric. Yeah, we're, we're the voices. Okay. But you guys and girls show up every single flipping day. And it is impressive to me. Like, I feel like I'm the one that has endurance, but really y'all the one that have endurance. Cause y'all come back. Y'all put up with my rants. Y'all put up with me when I'm wrong. Y'all put up with me when I predict the good things. Y'all put up with me when you feel like I jinx this team, which I don't because I predicted the World Series last year. So take it easy on me on, on this old boy. But Baltimore will probably make a trade. A lot of things are going to happen between now and the trade deadline. The Astros, I think, are clearly talking to a lot of clubs, but a lot of clubs are also talking to those same teams. And that's what muddies the water. That's what makes it tough. Yes, Jordan Montgomery would be great, a great starter from the Cardinals. Casey Lopez says, Jordan from the Cards, another lefty starter. Please, yes, I I 100% back that sentiment. Um, look, we play the Rangers one more time. I believe it's Labor Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend in September. Three more games. We're up six games to four. If we win one of those games, then we win the silver boot series. I think we just have to win one because we won one. We get gives us seven and the next two, they would win and we would win seven to six. So you win one out of three, we win the series regular season series. And if for some reason there is a tie, then we would own the tiebreaker. So I love that. Oh yeah, dude. Um, The way Melton's hitting, I think he's got 17 home runs right now. Whitaker is not going anywhere. He's pretty much done for the year. Whitaker's not going to come back this year. He has no trade value, unfortunately. We will win the division. I love that. Powered by plants. I love the positivity. Thank you. Always positive. Always strows. Y'all are great. Um, let me just mention one more time. If you guys you cannot watch the game, I want y'all to listen to the game. The Tampa Bay Rays come to town to hopefully be beaten by the Astros Friday, 7, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search Astros. Well, hey, guys and girls, this has been a great breakdown of the game. Look, tensions flared. The Astros cleared the benches as they should. And Mauricio Dubon came in late, was going to throw some fisticuffs. I'm pretty sure he was. He has got some fight in him. But he didn't lay down the Honduran hammer on him, So, which is good for the Rangers. The Rangers can puff their chest from the one win. We got the series. The second series in a row we've taken from then. They're the JV squad. We're the varsity squad. We're still the champs. Just don't forget who you are. Don't let one loss fade you. Don't let one. Don't let this Framber stuff fade you. Framber will be fine. He is our ace. He is going to do some big things late in the season and in the postseason. So, you know, this has been a another great episode. Why? Because you guys decided to show up. This is your time to shine. Thank you so much for tuning in to Locked on Astros. We love you guys. We love doing this. You make this fun. You make this enjoyable. Even when we lose, you're there with us because we don't die. We don't quit. We are Houston strong and we are Houston proud. So for myself, Eric Heisman, and everybody at Locked on Astros, make sure you subscribe to us, hit the like button, and make us your team every single day. Go Astros. Go get them. Go get those rays, baby. Let's go.